10 gemstones that formed in living things. Long before diamonds were pressed beneath continents, ancient forests turned to stone. Before rubies lit a royal crown, mollusks shaped orbs of iridescent nacre beneath shifting tides. Even before the study of geology began, biology was already writing its legacy in a matter that would outlast the bodies it once inhabited. This isn't a list of crystals, it's a gallery of relics born from life itself, where trees, coral, shells, and microscopic organisms left behind not just fossils, but beauty. In these stones, there are no fractures of destruction, only layers of persistence, each telling the story of time through growth, not collapse. Don't forget to press and hold that like button, leave a comment, and hit subscribe before we begin. Ranked and 10th. Stromatolite, the earliest stone built by life. Before trees rose, bones walked, and shells took shape in the sea, there was life, and it left a mark. Stromatolite is the physical memory of that beginning, a layered structure formed not by geology but by colonies of ancient cyanobacteria. These microorganisms, some of the planet's first life forms, built upward from shallow seabeds, trapping sediment and binding it with the sticky remnants of their existence. Over time, these microbial mats hardened into stone, leaving behind a fingerprint of the living in rock. Visually, stromatolites are nothing short of geological biography. Polished cross-sections reveal concentric rings, earthy waves, and ripple-like banding, each layer a page written by sunlight, water, and breath. No two patterns are identical, and each one records a day, a decade, a silence too vast to name. When cut and set into jewelry, Pieces often range from 20 to 60 carats, appreciated not for brilliance, but for the story they preserve. Collectors value stromatolite for more than rarity. It's not just ancient, it's ancestral. Every layer predates vertebrates, forests, and flight. Its carbon-rich structure shaped Earth's early atmosphere, releasing oxygen that made future life possible. This is not a gemstone of glamour. It doesn't shimmer. It doesn't glow. Instead, it holds weight, the kind carried by origin. To touch it is to run a hand across the spine of the planet's earliest autobiography, written not in ink, but in a fossilized breath. Rank ninth, Tagawa Newt, the gemstone grown by plants. This one grew quietly inside a living tree in a world where most gemstones are carved from volcanic pressure or buried beneath tectonic plates. Deep in the rainforests of South America, the Fidelifus palm produces a seed unlike any other. Tagua Nut often called vegetable ivory. Unlike minerals forged in fire or time, Tagua is alive from the start, an organic gem formed by a plant in real time, not over millennia. Its ivory-white core, hard as horn and smooth as wax, forms inside the palm's ripe fruit. Once dried and polished, it shines with a warmth nearly indistinguishable from real ivory. So much so that early 20th century artisans used it to craft luxury buttons, rosary beads, and even miniature carvings. Today, Tagua is resurging in sustainable jewelry design, especially in hand-carved pendants around one to inches long, valued for beauty and ethics. But what truly sets Tagua apart in this list is that it doesn't just come from something once alive. It still grows today. It is not fossilized, mineralized, or ancient. It is a living memory in solid form, a gemstone born from biology, not geology. Among the gemstones in this collection, amber with trapped insects, pearls formed in mollusks, and fossilized shells, Tagua is the only one that still falls from trees with the rain, a gem not dug from earth, but harvested from life. Ranked 8. Red Coral, the skeleton that once reached for light, where sunlight fades into the rhythm of salt and tide, a network of living creatures once rose, branch by branch. What appears today as a stone began as architecture in motion, an underwater framework built by countless coral polyps, each no larger than a grain of rice. Their bodies secreted calcium carbonate, constructing skeletal colonies that grew like flame beneath the waves. Over decades, these colonies hardened, their vibrant red cores slowly absorbing the story of the sea around them. That is the origin of red coral. Coral reveals its organic past in every line and pore. 
When polished, its surface glows with a deep, waxy luster, and inner fire artisans have revered for millennia. In Mediterranean jewelry traditions, branches of red coral were carved into amulets and prayer beads, often between 3 and 12 carats, said to protect against misfortune and evil tides. Its blood-red hue wasn't just decoration. It was seen as a life force preserved in mineral form. Coral's value, however, goes beyond color. It carries the imprint of an ecosystem. Its growth is shaped by ocean currents, water temperature, and even moon cycles. As the world's reefs contract, pieces of true, ethically harvested red coral have become rarer each year, elevating their place in the gem market as ornaments and relics. What remains in coral is not silence, but structure. A record of coordination between thousands of creatures who built not for beauty, but for survival. That endurance, captured in scarlet stone, tells a history deeper than depth itself. Ranked 7th Mother of Pearl, Nacre, from Shell Building Mollusks. Just beneath the tide line where moonlight flickers across moving water, mollusks build more than shelter. They compose something luminous. Their bodies craft nacre in fine, invisible motions, layering calcium carbonate into curved chambers that line the inside of shells. This is mother of pearl, born not in violence or fracture, but in continuity, day by day, movement by movement. What emerges is not brilliance but glow, a surface that doesn't flash but hums, soft, internal, and alive with iridescence. When light touches it, colors bloom like ripples, a muted spectrum suspended across a natural canvas. Artisans seek these surfaces for their quiet clarity, and they are used in one-inch cabochons for cufflinks, watch faces, and keepsakes that ask to be held rather than displayed. It's gem-shaped while the animal still lives, responding to tide and rhythm, not pressure or flame. Unlike minerals that end their story when unearthed, nacre forms in tandem with breath and motion, reflecting not a past, but a process. This one remains tied to the present tense in a collection of gemstones drawn from creatures long gone or plants long petrified. It's not a fossil, a relic or a fossil. It's a living trace of adaptation, curved, polished, and still echoing the body that built it. Rank sixth, Jet, the black stone pressed from ancient forests. Long before humans pressed coal or carved obsidian, time was already compressing its story into something darker. Jet began as driftwood, fallen trees swallowed by swamps, buried under mud, and sealed beneath layers of earth during the Carboniferous period. Over tens of millions of years, pressure and decay transformed that once living wood into a dense, lightweight form of fossilized carbon. Not mineral, not crystal, jet is the ghost of a forest, hardened into stone. To the eye, a polished jet carries a quiet matte sheen, deep black without sparkle, but rich with depth. Touch it, and the surface feels soft, yet heavy like something meant to hold memory. Its historical use stretches from Bronze Age beads to the black mourning jewelry of Victorian England, where it adorned brooches and lockets, often under five carats. In the hands of skilled carvers, jet yields gracefully, allowing fine detail that few other stones can match. But beneath the finish lies something more primal. Jet captures the essence of organic transformation, where plant matter crosses a boundary no longer alive but not yet stone in the traditional sense. Its formation tells a different time, not measured in eruptions or tectonic force, but in slow burial, weight, and silence. Worn against the body, it was believed to absorb grief. Kept in the home, it was thought to guard against unseen forces. And even now, it carries that same gravity, a gemstone shaped not just by nature, but by everything nature leaves behind. Ranked fifth, fossil coral, the patterned memory of ancient oceans. Before continents settled and mountain ranges cracked the sky, warm seas covered what is now dry land. Beneath those prehistoric waters, colonies of coral polyps built massive reef systems, dense, pulsing cities of life anchored in limestone. Over millions of years, those living structures were overtaken by sediment, buried beneath silt and volcanic ash, and slowly replaced molecule by molecule with silica. What remains is fossil coral, a gemstone where biology and geology exist in perfect symmetry. Its surface tells a story no other stone can mimic. Under a jeweler's lens, or even to the naked eye, 
Each fossilized coral cell forms a perfect rosette, delicate radial patterns that resemble flowers trapped in stone. No two pieces are alike. In high-quality cabochons, these petal-like structures appear startlingly preserved in honey, smoky gray, soft red, or bone-white tones. Pieces ranging from 15 to 40 carats often become centerpiece pendants or collector specimens prized for their biological detail as much as their aesthetic value. Unlike living coral, which bleeds color and responds to heat, fossil coral holds still, anchored in ancient times. Its formation requires life and loss, life to build and time to erase and remake. Its presence in jewelry is less about opulence and more about continuity, an inheritance from oceans that once breathed where deserts now lie. To wear fossil coral is to carry a structure older than cities, older than language, a fragment of marine architecture that outlived its builders, sealed in stone, yet still blooming beneath the surface. Ranked fourth, Ammonite, the spiral that survived the skyfall. Roughly 70 million years ago, long before birds traced the sky or grass covered the plains, the oceans teemed with creatures wrapped in coiled armor, ammonites, marine cephalopods that drifted through warm, cretaceous seas. When the asteroid struck, and the age of dinosaurs ended, these spiral-bodied beings vanished with them. Yet in a few scattered pockets of Earth, their shells endured, buried beneath pressure, touched by mineral seepage, and eventually reborn as a gemstone known today as amylite. The transformation is unlike anything else in gemology. Under intense fossilization, the aragonite layers of the ammonite shell fracture into microscopic scales, each reflecting light at a slightly different wavelength. The result is a mosaic of fire. Crimson, emerald, gold, violet, colors shifting with movement, like oil in a storm. Fine amylite, mined primarily from Alberta, Canada, can rival opal in brilliance, especially in cabochons above 25 carats, where full spectral play is preserved. But its value doesn't lie in radiance alone. Each amylite is the final chapter of a vanished species. Its spiral form, preserved with mathematical precision, speaks to ancient navigation, symmetry, and survival. Jewelry collectors prize it for color and origin, the feeling of holding a relic forged during extinction. More than a fossil, more than a gem, this is a fragment of a vanished biosphere, one last shimmer from an era swallowed by darkness, now polished and worn in light. Rank third, Pearl, the perfect response to imperfection. Hidden inside the hinge of a living mollusk, where seawater flows with the tides and muscle contracts with instinct, a pearl begins, not with brilliance, but with discomfort. When a grain of sand, a parasite, or a fragment enters the soft body of an oyster or mussel, the creature reacts, not by rejection, but by transformation. It surrounds the irritant with knacker, layering it with the same luminous substance that lines its shell. That slow, organic process continues for months or even years until something uninvited becomes revered. Each pearl is a singular equation, formed by biology, filtered through time, and polished by motion. Unlike cut gems, pearls emerge whole. No chisel, polish, or flame. Their surfaces shimmer with a glow known as orient, an interplay of translucent layers scattering light from within. The finest pearls range from 7 to 15 millimeters in diameter, whether found in the wild or cultivated under careful conditions. Depending on shape, luster, and rarity, they can command tens of thousands of dollars. But value isn't measured only in price. Pearls carry emotional resonance, are worn to mark rites of passage, are inherited across generations, and are passed down like wisdom. They are the only gemstone formed in real time by a living being, a record not of fossilization, but of response. Where other gems crystallize through collapse, pearls emerge through persistence. Each one is a sealed moment inside a life still moving, sensing, and shaping beauty from the unseen. Ranked second, Amber, the light that trapped time. There was a moment millions of years ago when the bark of an ancient tree cracked open. From its wound flowed golden resin, sticky, translucent, and fragrant, meant to seal and protect. But as it dripped, it caught more than air, 
It encased leaves, pollen, feather fragments, and even insects, soft bodies mid-flight. What began as a defensive act hardened over eons beneath layers of earth, becoming what we now recognize as amber, a gemstone suspended in memory. Amber is not stone and is not a fossil in the traditional sense. It is a biological exhale, fossilized light, formed entirely by trees, yet preserved like glass. Its texture is warm, and its surface is often smooth, with golden undertones, honey, butterscotch, and deep cognac. Within, whole ecosystems rest in stillness. A single 30-carat specimen may contain an ancient mosquito, a droplet of plant sap, or a fern spore untouched by time. The rarest pieces with perfect insect inclusion have crossed six figures at auction. Collectors don't seek amber solely for its aesthetics. They seek it for access. It holds more than color. It has breath. It is the closest humans can come to keeping a living moment from the Eocene, from a forest long gone but not entirely silent. The world is paused inside amber. Not dead, not decayed, simply waiting. Waiting in gold, in light, in resin that once flowed through the veins of a forest. And in that stillness lies a kind of eternity only life could have created. In the first place, petrified wood the forest cast in stone. Long before stone had memory, trees held it. They rose in silence, drank from rain-fed rivers, and stretched their limbs across winds no longer felt. Some fell not to fire or time, but to a more patient process. Buried beneath layers of volcanic ash and mineral-rich sediment, these trees, trunks, branches, roots, underwent a precise transformation that preserved the structure of life within the stillness of stone. That transformation gave us petrified wood. Seen under magnification, it reveals the impossible. Bark ridges, cell walls, growth rings, all perfectly mirrored in silica, chalcedony, or opal. The anatomy of a forest, captured with atomic fidelity. Its colors range from sepia to deep rust, sometimes laced with quartz veins or streaks of hematite, as if the earth was painting across ancient anatomy. Large slabs, sometimes weighing hundreds of pounds, are cut into collector specimens or sculpted into tabletops, carvings, or even 60-carat cabochons, each one a window into a world extinct but not erased. To hold petrified wood is to touch the continuity of time. This is not a fragment but a body, an organism that lived, breathed, grew, and then slowly crossed the boundary between biology and geology. It didn't fossilize as a relic of decay, but as an act of preservation so complete that even the grain of growth remains visible. This gemstone is not about brilliance or rarity. It is about memory rendered permanent, a cathedral of molecules raised in the shape of something that once swayed with the wind and now stands against it, silent, unbroken, and still reaching. They began as breath, as movement, as sap and soft tissue. Now they rest in glass and gold, not as decoration, but as echoes. Each gemstone we've explored was once alive. Coral that grew beneath tides, trees that turned to stone, shells that shimmered in motion. These aren't just relics of pressure and time, they're records of rhythm and response. Carved not by force, but by life unfolding. To hold them is to carry the memories of long vanished oceans, forests, and creatures. In these stones, the earth does not forget. It remembers in color, form, and silence. Let us know which resonates with you in the comments, and don't forget to like and subscribe to our channel for more content like this.